Hey guys, in my last video I came up with a bell scissor mechanism I was finally happy with. This means I can model the rest of the scissors. I felt like the roundovers on the handles were a little boring. I ended up making something a little closer to my aluminum model. A new design means new parts, which means new fixtures. But before I make any, I should 3D print the scissors to make sure I'm happy with the design. While things are printing, I decided to make some changes with how things are set up in the mill. Right now, all of the space is being taken up by two vices. Basically, this means I only have two places I can put things. I make fixtures, which hold more parts, but I have to switch out and relocate the fixtures when I want to make different parts. I got this SMW fixture plate a while ago, but I don't feel like I've used it to its full potential. If I mount fixtures directly to the plate instead of in a vise, I can fit more fixtures, which means I can make more parts at the same time. I decided to give John Saunders mod vise a try. I still need a vise so I can make the fixtures, but this will use less space. I'm going to make a fixture for the pins, because if I don't like how the 3D print turns out, it shouldn't affect the design of the pins. They're slow to make, so I'd like to run more than one of them at a time. Eventually, I should find somebody with a Swiss lathe or something to make them for me. I gotta admit, it took some time for me to get a feel of how to use this new vise. It uses countersinks to push the jaw into the part. When setting up, I should have backed the screws out more so I can give the jaw more range of movement. Okay, now things are perfect. <sighs> or not. It's been a while since I've used one of these ruffers. I put the step over a little high. The stock I have is pretty oversized. That's why I thought I'd use it. I saw that the mod vise had built-in diamond pins and I'd never done something like that before, so I thought I'd give it a try. I don't have an end mill long enough to mill the walls of the fixture, but I do have a relieved neck end mill, which worked out pretty good. And hey, it's a nice fit. So I can flip the part around and... Okay, this time I messed up because the vise ran out of room with the slots in the moving jaw and I should have brought it forward to the next hole so that I could, again, have proper movement with the jaw. Anyway. After I milled the part down to the correct thickness, I could relocate the part. I flipped the stock and program so you can see the damage on the part, but luckily it all gets milled away. Once it's nicely deburred, I can tap a few holes. Then I can bolt it to the table and use this hole to set my coordinate system. But the fixture isn't done yet. The last step is milling into some Mighty Bite clamps. Oops. I didn't import the model of the little top cap that holds the clamps still while you're machining them, but luckily it also turned out fine. Now I can make four pins at the same time. Uh oh. I'm still having a hard time finding a perfectly reliable drill recipe. I switched to this recipe. It seems better. It, it makes longer stringy chips, which usually you want to avoid, but I can clearly hear small chips getting clogged in the hole when I try smaller pecs or a more aggressive feed rate. Let me know what you think. It's stainless 303, but I'm also curious if I should switch to a stronger material for the real scissors I sell, because the pins will be rubbing against the hardened steel blades. Uh, 
what is happening now? Okay. A couple lines became double selected or something, but I was able to fix it and get some pins. There's always something that can go wrong. I need to dial the tools in, but hopefully this will make things a little faster. Especially if I don't have to take the fixture off the table to do other parts. Maybe you're wondering what this little section over here is. Well, part of the reason I abandoned my first design was so that I could use phosphor washer bearings like these. That way the blade doesn't rub on the handles. Fortunately, these new pins don't fit. So, I drop eight washers into my fixture, and I made a little clamp earlier, and then I can embiggen the holes. And it's always important to figure out how you're going to get parts out of the fixture, which is a mistake I've made before. Not bad. It's a bit of a journey, but this fixture seems like a success to me. Okay, back to 3D printing. I went back and forth on whether I wanted the handles to be concave or convex, but I still want to do interchangeable scales, so maybe a concave scale could be an option. I felt like my aluminum scissors were too slippery, and so that's why I experimented with doing different textures and the concave design. I didn't really want to put a bunch of holes in my handles like lots of other butterfly knives do. But check this out. For people who do like that style, why not leave the option available? Which led to an even crazier idea. Scales in scales. I don't know, maybe that's too much, but I think I have even more potential to experiment with this idea than I thought I did. Let's put the scissors together. To get things to fit, I copied the model and expanded all the internal geometry by 5 thou before printing. It actually works pretty good. But it's a good thing I printed these before making fixtures, because I did not mean to make these longer than the Alpha Beast. I wanted them to be a little longer than my previous prototypes, but I think this is a little much. I made another print as a single piece so I could see what a different size looks like. This is more like what I was going for, but now I'm starting to feel like I kind of do want to go bigger. I asked people on Instagram what length of bell song they prefer. I also went on Blade HQ and averaged a bunch of ballet lengths together. Hmm. I printed another model, this time with even more simplified geometry so the print support structure wouldn't be annoying. I think I like this size. It's still a little shorter than the Alpha Beast, but not by much. The total length is 9 and 3 quarters inches, and the handles are 5 and 3 eighths inches. I went ahead and printed the parts individually again. I decided to try different colors. This Mika 3D shiny filament doesn't really want to stick very well, especially the gold. I wouldn't recommend it. It's awesome to see the channel keep growing at a rate that's hard for me to even comprehend and to see how many people are interested in buying ballast scissors. And I'm trying to get the scissors made as fast as I can. This video might end up being a little shorter than my other videos. I'm trying something new. Right now, making the videos takes more time than doing the actual machining. So for this video, I thought I'd try getting outside help with the video editing. I hope this means I can make progress on the scissors faster, but this also means I might be able to release more videos more often. Hopefully it'll work out and you'll see me again soon. Bye.